Okay. Now, this is not in your book, but there's a similar picture in your book. I just like this one better. And what it shows is what a horizon is and what does the sky look like and what a zenith is. So that solves three questions, the horizon, the shape of the sky, and the zenith, right? Now, as far as the horizon goes, first question I'd like to ask is, how far do you think you can see with your eyes if you're in a flat desert, let's say, looking far away, how far can you see in all directions? Maybe a few miles. Two miles. Is that a few miles? Three miles? Four miles? 11 miles? Okay. Three uh, miles. Three miles. Three miles. So now, if you want to see headlights of a car, like a BMW, and you want to see two headlights, that's about two miles. So the way our uh, eyes work, you need to have at least that kind of an angle to see. It's kind of like seeing one pixel on the screen. Like if you look at one of these little stars here, there's no actual shape to it. It's just a little dot on the screen, right? So from two miles, if you look at a headlights of a car, all you see is one dot. Anything closer than two miles, you can actually see two headlights. So three miles is, the, is all you can see. Now, you've seen some pirate movies where the guy goes on top of some, you know, a stick. He looks around and he sees things, you know, with his camera or his telescope. He looks around. That's because you can see farther. The higher up you get above the ground. So you can see about 13 miles from a good-sized boat, like one of those fishing boats. You can see about 13 miles. If you're in an airplane flying to New York, you can see about 50 miles around you, right? So all together, you can see three miles this way, three miles this way, three miles this way, three miles this way. And if I showed you a similar situation, here's me in the middle of someplace. And I look around and I can see equally far away in all directions. You see? What do you think that makes? What shape is that? A circle. A circle. A circle is the only shape that if you're in the middle of, the perimeter, the edge of the circle, is equally far away in all directions. There is no other shape. Only one shape, circle. Ellipse doesn't work. Square doesn't work. Nothing works. Just a circle. So the circle is something we call the astronomical horizon. And you see this astronomical horizon if... You're in a place like in the middle of the ocean, some place that you can see equally far away around you. Like Linda was talking about buildings around her. So she doesn't have a horizon that is astronomical. So the astronomical horizon, you can write this down if you like. Astronomical horizon appears to be a circle because we can see equally far away in all directions. It's mostly because of the curvature of the Earth. That's why we can see only three miles around us. Again, if you go higher up, you can see farther. So horizon is where the Earth ends and the sky begins. It's the line between the Earth and the sky. And before you say, you know, why are we studying a sphere that is not real, a horizon that is not real, nobody's ever touched it, let me tell you that spherical astronomy is one of the most uh, interesting branches I've found in astronomy, one of the few classes that I got two A's in. And um, the reason for that is because we use it to, to predict stuff. Like, when is the next eclipse? Spherical astronomy. Um, when is the sunrise on such and such a day? Spherical astronomy. So this is all spherical astronomy. Even though it doesn't exist, we pretend that it does exist, and we made a branch of astronomy called spherical astronomy. Now, the sky. Now, you don't see equally far away around you when you look at the sky. Because if you look at the moon, the moon is only 230,000 miles away. The sun is 93 million miles away. And Andromeda Galaxy is 2.5 million light years away. But when I look at these things, they all appear to be equally far away underlying appear. So they appear to be equally far away. I can't tell which is farther, the moon or the sun. If they were closer than a couple of miles, yes. 
farther than a couple of miles, you can't. Normally I tell the students, I forgot to tell them in the last class, but my dad took me to Oregon for camping and uh, there was some snow on the mountains. And I said, dad, I'm gonna go to the mountains, get some snow, I'll be right back. I thought maybe it's like three miles away, so I ran. Well, it was 50 miles away, and the next day they send a helicopter after me. So you can't really tell with your eyes. Your eyes are unable to tell distances. After a couple of miles, you can't really tell. It's just like one pixel. And if you're wondering how many photons or you know, a speck of lights has to hit your eyes before it registers, it's between five and 14 photons. When they hit your eye, you can tell there's something there. Less than that, you can't even see anything, right? So the seeing requires five to 14 photons to register in your head, in your eyes. And like we said before, everything is in your head. So the celestial sphere is what we call the sky, appears to be a sphere because it appears, underline appears, because it appears to be equally far away in all directions. So if I move to space, if I go a million miles away, a billion miles away in space, it'll still look exactly the same to me because it has to do with me, a human being, a person, not the place that I live on. So if you didn't live on the earth, live on a flat earth, same thing. You still see a sky that is spherical. All right, any questions about the sky? Is the astronomical horizon and the horizon the exact same thing? No. <clears throat> okay, the okay. horizon is what you see uh, from wherever you are. Like Linda was looking at you know, the buildings around her. So you can't really see the line of the horizon around you where the horizon ends and the sky begins or the sky hits the ground and you call that the horizon, right? So mm -hmm. if you can see all the way around you clearly and there is no obstruction, that will be the astronomical horizon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So far, nothing biggie, right? So and, it's the ast and it's that horizon that appears. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's the horizon that appears, like this. And the sky is on top of your head. Now, the sky is a sphere, but the ground doesn't allow you to see the rest of the sphere. We'll talk about that in detail today. So here you are sitting here question. drinking coffee. Question? Yeah, is the zenith, is that the point which you stop being able to differentiate distance? And who said this? Is that Trevor? Trevor, Trevor Shaw? Yes. Okay, you got a point for that. Thank you so much, Trevor. I really appreciate it, Trevor. Yes, I forgot to tell you actually, I would have told you eventually, but right now is a great time. Zenith is the highest point in the sky. And Zenith changes. If you go to LA, different Zenith. If you go to Toronto, Canada, different horizon. Depends where you live. You will see different things at your Zenith, okay? But thank you very much. The highest point in the sky is called Zenith. It would have been easier if you're a little older than you know, 18 or 19, you would remember the Zenith used to be a TV brand. Right? TV brand called a Zenith. Excellent, thank you very much. All right, so here's you, here you are sitting there. Can anybody see this? It's a little too small. I promise I'll make the pictures a little bigger next time. So now you're sitting around looking at the horizon. Here's your north. If you're looking north, then east is always to the right. That's all you have to remember. Because if you're looking east, then west is behind you. If you're looking north, then south is behind you. So just remember north, and right east. So east is always to your right if you're looking north. Now, how many degrees above the horizon a star is, like this angle here? You see the angle from the horizon to the observer's eye to the star? So here's a star to the observer's eye, another line goes to the horizon. That's called altitude. So that's altitude. How many degrees above your horizon an object is, is called altitude. Now, azimuth is for giving directions north and south and east and west. And the way it works 
is azimuth is always measured from the north going east. So you start from north going eastward, and then you find the azimuth, azimuth and altitude. So altitude is how many degrees above the horizon it is, and then azimuth is how many degrees east of north it is. So in this case, you can go all the way to, uh, you know, 359 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle and now you're in the middle of a circle. So you go, okay, this is, appears to be about what? Uh, 35 degrees azimuth, which means 35 degrees east of north. So that's all. Uh, and that was east or west, correct? No, you always, azimuth always goes, you know, like 35 degrees is right here. If you go 90 degrees, it's right here. If you go uh, 180 degrees, it's here, south. If you go 360 degrees, it's back to zero again, like this. So, so say, is it is it proper to have a, a negative 90 degree azimuth, or would it be a, no, a 270 it's always degree? Positive. Always goes between zero and 360. Okay. So azimuth is the um, how many degrees to the left or right the, of the horizon something no. is? Or no, you, you measure it from the north, east, right? right? You go from the north towards the east and you measure this angle. So this would be 90 degrees. This would be 45 degrees. This would be 170 degrees. This is 180 degrees. We'll talk about that later in a little detail. But that's basically what it is. It goes clockwise. It goes, if you're looking north, yes. Does that like clockwise. coincide with the way the earth turns? Is that why we do that? No, it just has to do with where north is, where you oh. live. Okay, so don't worry about the altitude and azimuth right now. It'll come to you. I'll talk about it again. Now, when we look at the earth, a few things about the earth. The earth is not a perfect circle, but we pretend it is a perfect circle in this class. So there's your earth, and the earth is rotating. You know, they took uh, Galileo to the court at Vatican, right? And they told him to uh, recant, that he said that the earth is rotating, right? And so you know what he said? Nothing. Under his mouth, he kind of said, yet it does, yet it does rotate, you know? Kind of like that. It does rotate, so the earth does rotate. And because it rotates, we see things rise and we see things set, all right? So let me show you that. Before I show you sunrises and sunsets, let me show you the Earth. Okay. All right, so. All right, you guys, so now we're looking at this picture here. Let me get a hand of God. And so here's your horizon, right? Can you see it? Let me get the sun to come up. The sun went back up. Okay, the sun came up so you can see the green grass. So your horizon is kind of like this, right? I can rotate it. I go, okay, now I am looking north. So I'm looking direction north. So to my right is east. This is northeast then east and so on. Now, if I look, and I rotate the earth here. I'm gonna rotate the earth. Okay, things are rising kind of weirdly here. It's because I'm looking at it from almost the North Pole. San Diego, the San Diego. This is how things rise in San Diego. If I was at the equator of the earth, things would rise like this. Straight up, straight up like this, right? Things are rising. Now, if I was Santa, then uh, nothing rises for me. Things just keep going around. If I change the date now to seven, it's going to be sunny and the sun is going to come around. Nothing is setting. You see, for Santa, nothing is setting. You don't have to know any of this right now. I'm just showing it to you. So just enjoy the view. And now I'm going to go to, let's say, 32 degrees San Diego again. Everything is rising. Now, why is everything rising in the east? That's the question I have. And let's take a look at it. There's a sunrise. Can you remember that the everything is rising at an angle here? Rise, it's an angle towards the south here. 
right? Okay, that's something I want you to kind of burn into your memory. So when you look at things rising, you can see it. None of you probably ever noticed that the stars also rise besides the moon and the sun. The stars rise too. But there's only one thing that I know of that doesn't rise. Tell me the, what that one thing you think is, and you get a point. What is that one thing? The Earth. The, sky? <laughs> the, Earth. the moon? The North Star? No, no. The sun? No, no. North Star? No, no, no. The moon? No, the no, no. no. <laughs> black hole? Did you see a black hole? Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, you'll never see a black hole. You actually, you see a black hole rise. Uh, a galaxy? No, no, the answer is not that difficult. Think about it for a second. What is that doesn't rise? Hmm, it could rise in the east. It can rise in the west. It can rise, rise in the north. It can rise in the south. Satellite. The sun? Satellites. So the satellites uh. are the only things that do not rise in the sky, right? If you see a satellite going north and south, that's a spy satellite. If you see a satellite that is stationary, some satellites are stationary, it's called geocentric. They're for your TV set, if you or for your computer. If you see a satellite rising in the east, it's orbiting the Earth like a space station. Rises in the east, sits in the west, kind of like that. Goes around the Earth every hour and a half. All right? OK. Um, can I ask a question? Of course you can ask a question. Thank you. Um, I, I, Someplace in my brain, um, I thought some uh, celestial objects have been referred to as satellites. Is that not correct? Well, whatever is in the sky is called celestial objects, but uh, they're satellites, you know. Uh, they're just sent out by us. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about the man-made satellites. Yeah, satellites. yeah. Sorry, human-made. Um, no worries, but you can have a satellite that goes in the opposite direction of the Earth. Okay. And if it goes really fast, then it could rise in the West. But the term satellite always refers to human-made oh, It also refers to the moons of planets as well. Okay. All right. That's what I was thinking. Satellites. We only have one moon. We and it one. rises in the east and sets in the west. Even though it, it moves around the Earth, it, it revolves around the Earth right. the other way. It actually, every night you see the moon rising later, tomorrow yeah. night later. Right. About 45 minutes later. Right. All right. Wait, wait. So, so satellites don't actually move. It's the rotation of the Earth that makes it look like they're moving, right? Oh, no, no, no. Satellites actually move. Oh. Satellites go around the Earth mostly about, depends how far away they are, but about an hour and a half, a couple of hours, you see them go around the Earth really fast, actually. So no, they do move. All right. So now we're talking about sunrise, right? Okay. Here's the Earth's pole. Right? Here's the North Pole of the Earth. And if I looked at the North Pole of the Earth, the Earth is rotating. I'm looking at it from down here, looking at it. And the Earth rotates counterclockwise as seen from the North Pole. So it means this way, that's counterclockwise. So let's get that out of the way. Clockwise is the hand of the clock. I actually have a clock that does this. So this is called clockwise. This is called counterclockwise. Don't get hypnotized now, come back to me. So now, the Earth rotates counterclockwise as seen from the North Pole. If you look at it from the South Pole, it'd be the opposite, right? Okay, now, the question I have from you is this. Everything rises in the East. If everything rises in the East, does that mean the Earth for us I'm talking about practically. Does the Earth rotate from Pacific Beach towards El Cajon or El Cajon towards Pacific Beach? Does the Earth rotate for us west to east or east to west? Then maybe east to west. Okay, thank you. West to east. Okay, who said west to east? Billy. William. William, what's your last name? Yates. Yates. Lowell Yates. Yates, as in Y A T E S? Yep, William Lowell Yates. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yates. That's right. I'm going to give you a point for that, too. Now, so the Earth rotates from the 
beach west towards El Cajon. Now, does that mean that people in El Cajon see the sun first before people in Pacific Beach? Yes, that's what it means. So now you've heard of Japan being the land of the rising sun, right? Let me see if I can find Japan right here. I can see in the video, there's Japan. What's so special about Japan? Well, it's the farthest east in Asia. Is that right? No, because Siberia is farthest east in Asia. Well, we don't think about Siberia because there's nobody living there, I guess, this part of Siberia. So that's why we say the land of the rising sun. Because as the earth rotates, can you see there is Japan, the sun is hitting Japan. Now it's moving towards China. By the way, is that Taiwan? Aha. It's moving towards China and then it goes towards India and Middle East and then Africa and Europe. And then people in the Atlantic Ocean will see it. Then people in the US. Then people in Hawaii, my favorite place in the world, and they can see it. There you have it. So that's why they say Japan is the land of the rising sun, because that's the direction that the earth rotates. So people in Japan see it first, and then people you know, in China and on and on and on, all the way to, we see it in the United States. Any questions about that? See if you guys remember that. So the Earth is rotating from west towards the east. Therefore, people on the east will see the sunrise first. I know that there's different time zones. Would they be considered like the first time zone that? Talking about time zones? Yeah. Okay, time zones are man-made actually, but uh, there is an international time timeline that I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, so um, hold on to your questions just for a second. Um, yeah, time zones are totally goofy, right? Like Arizona doesn't even have time zones. They don't have, you know, uh, daylight savings time. Some people do have daylight savings time. Europeans do and don't. It's just the goofiest, pardon my language, sheesh. Yeah, goofiest sheesh. Okay, so now let's take a look at this thing I want to share with you guys. Back to my earth. All right. So we say the earth is rotating. As the Earth rotates, it rotates in this huge skewer, huge stick. That doesn't really exist. We put it there so we can see it. So here it is, this imaginary axis of the Earth. Right? All right. Now, as the Earth rotates, we don't see the Earth rotating. I've tried, you guys, and I made a video and I forgot to bring it to class today. I don't know why. I, I'll, I'll show it to you guys next time. You can physically see the earth is moving, right? And so now if you jump on a trampoline and the earth is rotating, will you end up in your neighbor's house? No. Do you wish, right? <laughs> no, you don't. Otherwise you jump high enough, you'd be like in Mexico City or something, right? That'd be pretty cool. Or you'd be in Europe and go, oh, I'm just gonna jump high enough. We're attached to the earth. The clouds are attached to the earth. Everything is attached to the earth. Doesn't matter how high you jump on a trampoline, you're going to come back down on the trampoline. All right, now, um, this axis of the earth is pointing to two places in what we call the celestial sphere. So the celestial sphere is infinite. It just surrounds the earth. But if I made the celestial sphere infinite, how was I going to show it to you in the class? How do I show anything infinite in the class? So I had to make it smaller so I can show you. So this is not the actual size of the earth versus the sky. I just have the celestial sphere for a practical reason. Now here's the earth. Now, the earth is pointing to two very specific places in the sky. The north axis of the earth is pointing someplace called North Celestial Pole. So right here is called North Celestial Pole. And then the south axis of the Earth is pointing to south celestial pole. So north and south celestial poles are two places in the sky where they appear to be stationary in the sky. As somebody was saying uh, North Star or something like that when we talk about rise and shine. You can actually see the North Star rise at the equator of the Earth. 
you can see it. Even though it's going to be on the horizon, it actually sets for just a few minutes and then it rises again. I don't remember who said that, but just so that you don't feel like, you know, I was uh, ignoring you or anything. Now, the Earth... Oh, I'm sorry. That's everywhere in the world for everybody. The North Star sets for a few moments and then re-rises. No, no, just at the equator of the Earth. At the equator. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to show you all this. Not to worry. So now, the Earth also has a very unique circle. It's called the equator of the Earth. So the equator of the Earth is 90 degrees from the North Pole and the South Pole of the Earth where Santa lives. In fact, I use Santa as my examples all the time. And I got to put somebody else at the equator. Normally, somebody from Ecuador, I guess, that'll be kind of a cool thing to do. So we say like Jesus lives here as an example. It's a good name. And then Santa lives here. And Sina lives in San Diego over here someplace. So the equator of the Earth is a very specific place on the Earth, right? It's just like surrounds the Earth, kind of in the middle of the Earth. We say everything above towards the North is called the Northern Hemisphere of the Earth. Everything below the equator here for us is called the Southern Hemisphere of the Earth. Now, to give you an example, if you live in Australia, you say, this will be below the equator of the Earth. This will be above the equator of the Earth. So we're kind of prejudiced towards people in the Southern Hemisphere, in our language anyways. All right. Now, if I expand this equator of the Earth, have you guys ever seen the equator of the Earth expand? I will do it for you. So I'm going to expand the equator of the Earth until it hits the sky. Sheesh. So I expand it, expand it, gets bigger, 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 and it hits the sky. When it hits the sky, it makes an imprint on the sky. This is called the celestial equator. We say the celestial equator is the projection of the Earth's equator onto the sky. So here's the celestial equator, here's the Earth's equator. Here are the axis of the Earth, North Pole, North Celestial Pole. So if you follow the axis of the Earth where it hits the sky, this is North Celestial Pole, this is South Celestial Pole. If you keep making the equator of the Earth bigger and bigger and bigger, it hits the sky, it makes the celestial equator. So now we say, this is a northern sky. All of this is northern sky above the equator of the Earth. And this is a southern sky. And if you say, well, what about the equator? Well, see, lines don't have a thickness. Let's keep that in mind from now on, please. So a line has no thickness. And geometry doesn't make any sense. You can't make sense from geometry. It's not a logical thing when you start geometry because the Greeks say a line doesn't have a thickness. It's one dimensional. Surface has two dimensions and a space volume has three dimensions, right? Well, how do you make a surface? Well, you put a whole bunch of lines together, but line doesn't have a thickness. How do you make a surface? See, that's why it doesn't make sense. So geometry is kind of, you know, though, imaginary geometry, right? But that's what a line is, that's what a surface is. So this is a line, it doesn't have a thickness. So this is zero degrees, we say, in the sky. That's how we measure things in the sky, we say this is zero. We'll get to that later. This is zero on the Earth, all right? This is zero and zero. So what is that called on the Earth? I think I went the wrong way. Allow me to get to my Earth, all right. Here is the Earth. This is the equator of the Earth, all right? Here's the equator of the Earth. And we have something called latitude, and we have something called longitude. Latitude is a piece of cake. Latitude is how many degrees above and below the equator of the Earth you are. And if you are working for like Instacart or you're working for Amazon or something, you have to have an app to find the places on the Earth so we use something called latitude and longitude. It's like a coordinate of the Earth. It's like the grid of the Earth that you can find stuff. So we start at the equator of the Earth. We say that's zero degrees. It's not north or south. As we go towards the north pole of the Earth, this is 90 degrees. Imagine a line from here and a line from here. This is a 90 degree angle. 
You see that 90 degree angle, you guys, this line here and this guy here, 90 degrees. So this is zero. This is probably, I don't know what they have, 15 degrees north, 30 degrees north, 45 degrees north, and so on, all the way to 90 degrees north. And these lines that you see here, parallel to the equator, these are the latitude lines. San Diego is at 32 and a half degrees north latitude. My favorite place in the world, um, Hawaii. It's about 20 degrees north, so they're farther south. Maui, Hawaii is about 21 degrees, I believe, north. Okay, which is pretty cool because from the equator, 23 and a half degrees above and 23 and a half degrees below, it's called the tropics. So this is the tropics. We don't live in the tropics. We're just above the tropics. What's the benefits of living in Hawaii, like in Maui? I tell you. It's like you put on your flip-flops and your shorts and you go to the beach in the morning. And then at night, you put your flip-flops on, you put your shorts on, and you go home and you have dinner. And then midnight, your wife says, let's go for a walk on the beach at midnight. You put on your shorts and your flip-flops and you go to the beach. Notice, flip-flops, shorts. You don't need anything else. And the water is always warm. Huh? Always, always. Oh, warm. It's, it's not just warm, it's perfect. Yes, it but, is. At night, too. Wow. Oh, my God. It's heaven and earth, right? I think it has a lot to do with the ocean. Mm -hmm. It is the best place ever. And you guys can go there for $300. Just find a place. That's all. $300 airplane fare. Jeez. But I think everybody's making a you know, uh, places, reservations right now for like next year. But you have to pay for it if you make a reservation. So that's kind of a bummer. My wife doesn't let me make it right now. I kind of like to do it. Though. Okay, anyways. Maui, Hawaii, go there. You'll be happy you did. Now, that was latitude. How many degrees north or south of the equator you are? Now, when you go south, we go 15 degrees south, 20 degrees south, 30 degrees south. But you can also say minus 10 degrees, minus 20 degrees. So minus and... Putting a south at the end, same thing. Now, if you go to 66 and a half degrees and farther north, that's called the Arctic Circle and Unarctic Circle. Antarctic is actually a continent. Arctic is nothing there, just ice. This ocean frozen. So that's, that's the North Pole, right? All right, now we get to longitude. So it was so simple, wasn't it? Latitude, longitude, not so simple. This is England. And this line here is called a prime meridian. Goes all the way around the Earth and comes back again here. I'll show it to you on the uh, Earth's globe, too. And it used to go through Paris, France. But, of course, they lost the war to the British, so now it goes through Greenwich, England. Greenwich, England is about here. It's is the eastern part of uh, England. They call that the Rose Line. Yeah, have you ever been I, there? No, I've, I've actually read about that a lot. Yeah, you know, there's actual line on the ground. And they have the yeah. roses marking, or they have the, the longitudes marking for- Right, like, right. The and you go there and you see all these people, right? With their cell phones. They're standing there. Can you take a picture of me? One foot in the Eastern Hemisphere, one foot in the Western Hemisphere, they think they're special. Mm. So, you know, it is life. But that's what people do in Greenwich, England. There's nothing else to do there except to look at old stuff, which I'm interested in. Everybody else just wants to go there for picture taking. Anyways, awesome place. But England altogether, I was bored. You wouldn't believe how bored I was. Oh, my God. Let's not even talk about, oh, jeez. Let's not talk about the dating scene in England. Like if you don't have, you know, a suit on and, you know, your tie and everything, the girls didn't even talk to me, right? It was like, oh, come on, man. But I do, I did go there when the hippies were around. So I was kind of a hippie back then. So, you know, that's probably. They don't it. realize the people with more money don't flash it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was a billionaire back then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now longitude goes 180 degrees one way and it goes 180 degrees the other way so if you're 
in the western part of the longitude, like this is west of Greenwich, England, you've been in the western hemisphere. Here, you're in the eastern hemisphere. So most of the Europe is actually in the eastern hemisphere. And then the line comes back. And you have international dateline. International dateline is kind of like your time that you're talking about, right? So here is, let me see if I can find it in the other direction. Sheesh. Jeez, we we'll have north. Yep, I do. All right. So, geez, there it is. There is the line right here. The line goes all the way to England. There's England, and then it goes through Spain. It goes all the way around. When it comes back around, though, it comes back in the Pacific Ocean. Now, look what happens to this poor line. You guys watching this beautiful line we call the International Dateline. It's right here, the International Dateline. And then look what happens. Politic happens. Look what happened to the Dateline. Sheesh. Why? Because there was an island here. Didn't want to be in yesterday. They wanted to be in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a boat, and go over it and go like tomorrow, yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday, over the international date line. Ridiculous, right? Same at time. It's like uh, the time in Arizona is different than the time in New Mexico. Can't figure this out. And that's not real time anyways. It's like the time in even El Cajon should be different than the time in San Diego. So there's an actual time that is kept in San Diego, right? So no worries about time right now. In fact, I don't even like to talk about time too much. So Noah says he grew up in Oahu. Yeah, I hope you've been to Oahu lately. It looks like LA. There's rush hours there. Oh my God, Oahu. Oh, breaks my heart. Okay. So now allow me to share something else with you guys. All right, remember I was showing you this horizon here. Now let's take a look at north. There is north. And the axis of the earth is pointing to this north celestial pole. Remember, right here in San Diego. What is our latitude in San Diego? 32 and a half degrees. Now, let me measure this angle. Is it really 32 and a half degrees? You can read it. It says... 32 and a half degrees, that's what it is, okay. So this North Celestial Pole is where the axis of the Earth is pointing to in the sky. We can see it everywhere on the Earth, including San Diego. For us in San Diego, it's 32 and a half degrees above the Earth. Now, what if I go to, say, um, two degrees north, just above this equator of the Earth? Look what happens here. Now, North Celestial Pole is only two degrees above the horizon. Two degrees, right? That's it. What if I go to England, like 55 degrees north? Oh my God, look how high above the horizon it is now. Right next to it, though, there is a star. This is called a North Star or Polaris. It actually happens to be there by accident. Uh, in the future, it's not going to be there, you guys. Like if I went to year, I'm going to change the date to BC, 2021 BC, you guys. Let's see what happens. Ha! Huh. North Star is over here now. There is Polaris. So it just happens to be there. Even when Jesus was born, it wasn't there. So it's a fairly recent thing. If I go back to uh, AD, again, it's over there. But if I go back to year 16, I don't know, 1200 AD. Look, still not a North Star. Does this have to do with the expansion of the universe? No, no. The expansion of the universe works on the grand scale. So, like, you're not moving away from me, are you? No, and I know it would take billions of years, but I, I read somewhere that if... Uh, no, 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 it's happening all the time. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, yeah. It's happening continuously. Some places at the speed of light, so no, it's happening. But gravity locally stops that expansion. Yeah, so, I, but I read somewhere that future generations will not see the same 
uh, star constellations that we see today. Oh, oh, that. Uh, because, like, oh, I'm not sure what future it. generations are we talking about? That's because... Long, long distant future. So okay, so that's because the looking. Earth is orbiting the galaxy, not because of, uh, you know, expansion of the universe. Oh, not because those stars will be farther and pulled away or stretched. Right, right. It's because the stars are moving or going around the galaxy, and so is the solar system. We're all moving around the galaxy, so it's an individual thing. But the stars are moving; otherwise, they'd be stationary. You know. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, no worries about that. All right. Isn't, yeah. isn't the Polaris moving slowly because of the angle that Earth is spinning and how it's slowly changing over time? Okay, now see, we're jumping into the future. That was kind of like the question about the weather and everything. But yes, I will answer your question, though. I will not leave you, you know, hanging. It's because of something called the precession of the Earth's axis. So in other words, let me go and come back. You made me do it. So the Earth is spinning, right? But it does this too. Like a top, you know how you spin a top? It tops, goes around and goes... Mm, he's dying, right? Top goes around like this, and then he dies. So the gravity of the sun and the moon are bringing it down, so the Earth does this. But it takes 26,400 years. And so we see it very, very gradually over hundreds of years. So you're not going to see it in this lifetime. But come back to me next lifetime. I'll be your student next lifetime, right? So no worries. All right, we'll get there. We'll talk about that in detail. All right, so let me go back here. To the Earth, let's take a look at this guy here now. I'm gonna see if the Earth is gonna rotate for me. Earth, rotate. Okay, so the Earth is rotating, and that's why things are setting in the west and rising in the east. So the sun is gonna come back here. Come back, sun. There's the sun coming back. But guess who's not setting and rising, right? These constellations here, they're always gonna be visible. They're not going to go below. So what is a constellation? A grouping of stars. On Thursday, I'll do your astrological predictions for you. I'll tell you like how your life is going, how your life is going to be going, depending on your uh, sign. Sheesh. It'll be fun. Just as long as you guys don't get, you know, insulted because your sign is not the best sign in the world or something. So anyways, now in San Diego... We're going to have less of these constellations. They're always in the sky. This is called Sir, C-I-R, Cum, C-U-M, Polar, Circumpolar. So Circumpolar stars or constellations are stars or constellations that don't set from a given location. So let me show you now. Latitude San Diego. Watch what you're seeing right now. We're going to go to San Diego quickly. Look, a lot less stars and constellations. They are circumpolar now. In other words, always in the sky. They never set, never rise. So now what if I go to uh, zero degrees? Oh, my God. Zero degrees. North Celestial Pole is at the horizon. And everything is setting. Nobody is circumpolar here. And is that only for San Diego? This is the equator of the Earth. So this is Ecuador. Okay. So if I go to 32 degrees, this is us. So if you look north, you can find it. You can find North Celestial Pole. So how do you exactly find it? Oh, yeah. Well, let me back up the Earth just a little bit. So what you want to find is another homework I'm going to give you tonight. When it's clear, whatever, even the weekend, about 8 o'clock at night, this is what you guys are going to see. You guys are going to see this constellation here. This constellation is called Orsa Major. Orsa Major means the big bear. There is a big bear, right? Now, this big bear has something called an asterism. That's A-S-T-E-R-I-S-M, asterism, A-S-T-E-R-I-S-M, asterism. So the Big Dipper is an asterism in the constellation of Orsa Major. In it, there are two stars, Merak and Dope. 
These two stars are called the pointer stars. That's why I want you guys to go find it. I think nine, nine o'clock tonight is a good time. So nine o'clock, you look north, you find a constellation of Orsa Major. What you're really looking for is an asterism of Big Dipper. Dipper means a dipper, kind of like a um, ladle. It's like this is the bowl of the ladle, this is a handle of the ladle, the dipper. I guess in the olden times, they used to have a communal bucket everybody drank out of or something. <coughs> like with a ladle, that's what it is. Okay, yeah, and you know, in England, they call it the plow. Kind of looks like a plow. You grab this and you dig the dirt like that. So these two stars, if you go five times between these two, they point to the North Star. And so you find the North Star, you find yourself the North Celestial Pole. This is an actual North Celestial Pole. Right? This is where the axis of the Earth is pointing to, where you're at. All right. One last thing before we say goodbye to each other. I am going to turn on the other camera behind me. You're going to be able to see the board close up. And I'm going to draw everything that we talked about today and more before you go. And I want you guys to tell me which works better, virtual whiteboard or an actual whiteboard. So this is an actual whiteboard I'm gonna give you guys now. Let's see what your opinion is. All right, allow me to change cameras, please. Okay, the camera. Okie dokie. All right. Change your camera and so I'm gonna draw the celestial sphere and I'm gonna put the earth in the middle of the celestial sphere. Let's take a look, you guys. Uh, don't laugh at me when I make a goof up, sorry. They actually laugh at me. Laugh all you want. So here's a celestial sphere. All right, close enough. That's a celestial sphere. Now, how do I make it into a sphere? Kind of like this. <laughs> Voila, it's a sphere now, right? And so there's a celestial sphere. So where's the Earth in this celestial sphere? This celestial sphere, let's put some stars in. Here's some stars. Northern Hemisphere stars, yay! There's Northern Hemisphere stars. Southern Hemisphere stars, so this is Southern Sky. Northern Sky. Yay! And then... We have the Earth. So let me draw the Earth. That's the center of the screen, sort of. Okay. There's the Earth. And the Earth has an equator. And an axis. The biggest meatball you've ever seen, right? There's the axis of the Earth. Now, I'm going to follow that axis of the Earth until it hits the sky. So I'm going to follow the axis of the Earth. Sorry, it's not perfect. And this is called North Celestial Pole. So this is a North Celestial Pole. There's no celestial fall. So I follow it down to axis of the earth hits the sky. This is called a south celestial pole. So this is a south celestial pole. South celestial pole. So what do we call this whole thing? The celestial sphere. And what is this called? Well, this is the celestial equator. Celestial equator, which is a projection of the Earth's equator, right? So this red line on the Earth is the Earth's equator. 
and I expanded it until it hits the sky, and it became the celestial equator. And then the Earth rotates, so it rotates this way. Counterclockwise, if you look down on the Earth from the poles, and then, um, so this is a north pole of the Earth, this is a south pole of the Earth, this is a northern hemisphere of the Earth, this is a southern hemisphere of the Earth, and then North Star is right here. North Star is called Polaris. Okay, like that. And let's see now. Now, I'd like to show you a topic that is kind of a little difficult to use your imagination for. Let me see what I have here. So, I save everything for you guys so I can use it in the class. So what I have here is something called a horizon. Can you imagine yourself in a horizon like this? So Santa's horizon, this is a North Pole of the Earth. South Pole of the Earth. Santa's horizon is going to look like that. Santa's horizon. If you live in the equator of the Earth, your horizon is going to be like that. If you live in San Diego, your horizon is going to be like that. Somewhere in between the equator and Santa. So your horizon changes depending on where you live like this. You see? So like that, all right? So your horizon keeps changing depending on your latitude. Now, I am gonna use Mr. Santa's help. So Mr. Santa lives here. Let me give Mr. Santa some space here. Mr. Santa. Mr. Santa at the North Pole of the Earth. And he can only go south. He can't go east. He can't go west. He can't go north. That's all I can do is just go south. So if I'm Santa standing at the North Pole, as soon as I move, I'm going south. He doesn't have east and west, right? He doesn't have anything but south. There's nothing north of the North Pole either. So he can only go south. All right, so where's Santa's place? Now, what does Santa's horizon look like? Something like this. Like that. That's Santa's horizon, which looks like the celestial equator. So actually, Santa, when he looks around, he sees the celestial equator all the way around his horizon. So the celestial equator is all the way around Santa's horizon. And for Santa, as the Earth rotates, stars go around and around, but they never go below his horizon. So the stars rise and set in 24 hours, which is really 23 hours and 56 minutes. That's how long it takes the Earth to rotate. So this rotation is really 23 hours and 56 minutes like that. All right. Now, what if I was... Jesus at Ecuador. What would my horizon look like now? So here is my Jesus. He lives here. His horizon is kind of like this. Now his horizon requires a little bit of explanation. Look, his horizon ends at north and south celestial poles. Why can't I show you? Because I have to have an Earth that has size. If I made the Earth a dot, then that dot, which is the Earth, his horizon is going to go straight down like this to north and south celestial poles. So it's really like this. I'm just faking it because I have to give you the Earth some kind of a size. So his horizon ends at north and south celestial poles. This is his horizon does. This doesn't look very nice and neat, though. Yeah, I'm just faking it so you guys can all see it. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. What does, how many degrees above Santa's horizon? We said this is Santa's horizon. 
How many degrees above Santa's horizon does Santa see North Celestial Pole? 90. 90, excellent. So what does 90 degree angle look like? Looks like this. 90 degree angle. It looks like this. 90 degree angle, like that. So basically, North Celestial Pole is at his zenith on top of his head. So for Santa to see North Celestial Pole, he looks at the highest point in the sky, that's 90 degrees above his horizon. He goes, okay, there is North Celestial Pole, and he's done. Now, anti-Santa, Grinch, he lives at the South Pole. And if he lives here, as Grinch, I don't know what he looks like. When he looks down, he should see South Celestial Pole on his horizon too. Now, what does Jesus, so this is Jesus, right down. How many degrees above Jesus's horizon will he see North Celestial Pole? We'll see North Celestial Pole. How many degrees above his horizon? Is it also 90? Okay, so 90 is kind of like this, right? So Jesus to see North Celestial Pole, where is he looking? If he looks on top of his head, what does he see? He sees this spot right here, right? So he sees Celestial Equator on top of his head. Do you see Jesus? Should I make Jesus bigger? That's Jesus. If he looks up, he sees Celestial Equator on top of his head. Santa looks up, he sees North Celestial Pole on top of his head. So Jesus sees North Celestial Pole, zero degrees is at his horizon. So this is zero degrees above his horizon. Santa, on the other hand, Santa will see North Celestial Pole. How many degrees above horizon? Um, That's right, 90 degrees. Excellent. 90 degrees above his horizon. All right. Who said 90 first time? That was me. No. Who are you? Noah. Noah, what's your last name? Penny. Spell for me, please. T-E-N-N-E-Y. Thank you so much. Yeah, you, know, you get a point for that too. Good job. Okay, excellent point. All right, so question. Santa sees North Celestial Pole on top of his head, 90 degrees. He looks up, he sees it. What is Santa's latitude? What's the latitude? The Earth. North Pole of the Earth. 90. 90. So, Santa, 90 degrees north, he sees North Celestial Pole, 90 degrees above the horizon. So, hmm, 90 degree latitude. Hmm. 90 degree north latitude. What about Jesus? What's his latitude? He lives at the equator. Zero? Because it's Zero. Very good. Thank you. So, he sees his latitude is Zero degrees latitude. Enter Sina. This is me now. That's me. 32 degrees north or 32 and a half degrees north. What does my horizon look like? My horizon looks like this. And I think this will click once you see this. This will help you understand what we're talking about. So now, this is my horizon. How many degrees above my horizon would I see North Celestial Pole? 32 degrees. Very good. So this would be 32 or 32 and a half degrees. Excellent. Right? Actually, 32 and a half degrees. There's no north here. All right. So that explains what we just saw. If you live in San Diego, North Celestial Pole is going to be 32 and a half degrees above your horizon. 
because your latitude is 32 and a half degrees. If you're Santa, your latitude is 90. Then you see North Celestial Pole, 90 degrees above your horizon. If you live at 50 degrees north, you see North Celestial Pole, 50 degrees above your horizon, and so on. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Eva. Nothing I can do for you. I'm so sorry. Here, uh, Wi-Fi is not working. Okay. Yay. All right. Thanks for the notes, you guys. All right. So let me change cameras again. I have a question just for clarification. Yes. So you wouldn't be able to see the uh, North Star at the South Pole, correct? You can see North Star if you go below the, the equator of the Earth. So in other words, you can't see it in Australia. If you see South Celestial Pole, the only person that can see North and South Celestial Poles will be the guy at Ecuador on a mountaintop. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah, that does. That's the only person. Everybody else, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see North Celestial Pole. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can see South Celestial Pole and so on. I, uh, yes, please. Um, just to clarify, so there's only going to be like one Polaris, which is in the northern celestial pole. Yeah, there's nothing in the south. Okay. You're asking for South Star or something? Yeah, I was just wondering. Just yeah, thinking. there's nothing there. But this is a good question. What's your last name? Uh, Borja, B O R J A. That's a good question because. Some people may think there's a South Star. There is a South Star. It's really, really faint. You can't even see with the eye, so it's kind of useless. All right, you guys. It was um, fun I, having you guys. Any other questions? I have a question just please, for please. clarification. Okay, so San Diego itself is 32 and a half degrees uh, above the horizon. San Diego latitude. I'm sorry, above the equator. San Diego latitude is 32 and a half degrees north. Okay. Yes. And did you say that from San Diego, we see the North Celestial Pole at 32 and a half degrees above our northern horizon? That's right. Very good. In fact, I remember showing you guys, but I'll show it to you again. So here it is, North Celestial Pole in San Diego, 32 and a half degrees above our horizon. So if I go to 50 degrees or 60 degrees north, North Celestial Pole is moving way up, 60 degrees above my horizon. If I go to five degrees north, it's five degrees above my horizon. If I go to zero degrees, it's at my horizon, it's just zero. Can you guys see this, by the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so now it's zero degrees. Could that be if you're looking at the equator, or if you're on the equator, is that what you would see? Right, right, now the celestial equator is gonna be on top of your head. So there's the top of your head. The celestial equator is right here. I can turn it on for you so you can see okay. it. Equator. So wherever... There it is. See it? I'm sorry? Wherever someone is in relation to the horizon, that's also the same degrees to see the North Celestial Pole. Excellent, Linda. Excellent. That's correct. Okay. Now I have a question to ask just so somebody gets a point before we say goodbye to each other. Captain, let's see. Which captain do you guys like? Captain America. Captain America. Okay. Captain America is in some location on the earth and he's lost. He needs your help. He sees North Celestial Pole 20 degrees above his horizon. What is his latitude? 20 degrees. I'm sorry. What? 20 degrees north. 20 degrees north. What is his latitude again? 20 degrees north. Excellent. Who's this? Cindy. Cindy, what's your last name? Costa. Spell it for me, please. C O S T A. Thank you, Cindy. All okay. right, very good. That's right. So I could have a question like that on the exam. You're lost, Captain. Well, who's Johnny Depp? Captain what? Captain Sparrow. Sparrow. Captain Sparrow. Captain Sparrow sees. South Celestial Pole, 15 degrees above his horizon. Help him. Where is he? 15 degrees north. 15 degrees south in this case. 
because he sees south celestial pole. Right. So when in Australia you see um, south celestial pole, 32 and a half degrees above your horizon. What huh? city are you in? Just kidding. It turns out to be Sydney, Australia is 32 and a half degrees south of the equator. Yeah, Sydney is like the same as San Diego, but south of the equator. Right. It's our sister city. Yay, you guys. Thank you so much for showing up, you guys. Did I uh, stop sharing yet? I'm going to stop sharing.